Hey everybody, I'm Chris Metzler here, uh, one of the programmers with the Green Film Festival San Francisco, presented by SF Indie Fest. Um, you just saw the really wonderful short film, Isle Wild, and we are lucky enough to have uh, both of the directors here, Anna Moot Levin and Daniel Schloss. Welcome, guys. Great to be here. Most definitely. Uh, this was kind of a fun film to run across in submissions, and, um, you know, People often ask, like, where do filmmakers get ideas for their documentaries, you know? And I think that's particularly the case for this one. So um, how did you know that this was a story you wanted to tell? And um, also, how did you go about getting access? Um, well, yes. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, my now husband and I took a trip to the mysterious, wild place of Roosevelt Island, which is um, this island that's just uh, east of Manhattan that um, is right there, but New Yorkers rarely make it there. Um, and so we'd heard about um, Rosanna and um I'm a big cat person. Um, and so my husband thought that it would be a great trip. And um, yeah, pretty much the moment that I met her, I was like, I need to make a film about you. Um, <laughs> and she's um, she's just such a such a force of nature. Um, and Daniel Schloss and I have known each other and worked together for a long time. And uh, Daniel's a big big animal person as well so I I told him about her and um we we set out on this journey yeah Very I think, nice. yeah I think we'd been talking about making some other animal documentary or we'd kind of been that had been on our minds and so um it it also was like a 20 minute drive from where I was living in North Brooklyn and I had also never it was also very mysterious to me well, you know, there's that old adage in filmmaking, which <laughs> I'm sure you've heard about never working with children or animals in the sense that when you're making a documentary that involves animals, does that also hold true or were there some different surprises in regards to having to tell a story that involved wildlife that made things a little bit uh, different than normal, I guess, human documentaries? Yeah, I mean, I think the um, one thing we had going for us, which we, you know, realized as soon as we got there is that there were a lot of animals within this pretty small contained space that she's taken care of. Um, there were geese with these broken wings who really couldn't fly away and they were just within this, con you know, she was taking care of them and the cats kind of when we went there, everyone was just around. So I think that appealed to us as like, oh, we can actually get pretty close. Um, and I think at the beginning, we kind of weren't sure how much we would be focused on the animals versus on Rosanna and other things that were happening on the island. And so it kind of just developed naturally as we kept going there one day here, one day, one day there. Yeah, and I'll also and just say that, um, you know, Daniel, uh, who shot the film as well, I think has just an incredible eye for for filming animals and, and children in particular. So um, it's it's really, uh, yeah, his, his niche. In, in fact, I would say there there were many times during the first few days where I was kind of just shooting the animals and, and Anna would remind me like, we should probably get more footage of Rosanna and what she's doing too. Because uh, when you have a, yeah. you know, 10 geese like hanging out with each other, I could just watch that for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys alluded to the idea that this is kind of like, you know, under the radar for so many New Yorkers, you know? Do you think that... Um, the kind of more hidden gym aspect of it kind of allows it to kind of be what it is, you know, in the sense of like kind of out of sight, out of mind, or if more people were aware of what was happening, do you think that what was going on would be more at risk? Um, I think, you know, Roosevelt Island is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's partly an undiscovered gem, but also, you know, there are a lot of tourists that come. I think it's mm. more just as a New Yorker, it's just not a destination that you think of um, okay. when you're when you're planning your day. Um, <laughs> when you're planning your weekend, you don't think, oh, uh, let's go to Roosevelt Island. But I think 
more New Yorkers should go to Roosevelt Island because mm. it's such a, a fascinating place um, that's that's unlike anywhere else in New York City. And I feel like the tourists go there um, and they're they're sort of discovering it and taking advantage of it. Um, but uh, New Yorkers just don't. I mean, it's sort of there's every you know, there's so many neighborhoods in New York and it's so overwhelming in certain ways, even if you've lived there for a long time, there are whole undiscovered gems all over the place, probably. And mm -hmm. so um, this one happens to be an island that there's a subway stop, there's the tram that goes there, there's a bridge, it's very easy to get to. Um, and there's 12,000 people who live there. And uh, so it's good to explore a new neighborhood every once in a while. All right. And have you had a chance to share the film uh, with them and what their uh, the response or what made them kind of decide that they wanted to participate in the film? Uh, Rosanna? Yeah. Um, she <laughs> kind of, I mean, I mean, she was very ambivalent for a long time. I think she uh, is pretty humble person. And uh, one thing that made her a great character is she kind of ignores the camera and just does her own thing and is very focused on the animals. But every time we talk about trying to get more access to this or, you know, I think she was just like, focus on the animals. Like they're the, they're the important ones. Um, and so I think there was a moment when after we'd been editing it for a year and we finally showed her a cut of the film, we were very nervous because we just knew that she was a little embarrassed to be on camera and not sure what she would think of it. And uh, from the first moment, she was kind of crying, like seeing these animals again and seeing the story. And I think she finally got what we were doing um so she's very happy with the film and we had a really nice screening on roosevelt island a couple of months ago um oh awesome a lot of the people who support her came out um which was very nice um when you were kind of like starting to uh, shoot the film was there kind of like a certain like approach that you knew you wanted to take like in telling the story or even aesthetically or was that something that kind of developed over the course of making the documentary? Um, it definitely developed and evolved a lot. I mean, we actually shot, it's a short film, but we we shot it over the course of two to three years. Um, and, you know, we weren't, sh when we first started um, the whole uh, conflict over, you know, the future of this part of the island hadn't yet started. And so, you know, we began making the film as really a film about, um, you know, Rosanna and the sanctuary and, you know, the animals and their different, you know, personalities. Um, <laughs> and then once we saw um, the fact that this area was then under threat, that became much more of the focus of the story and this question of, you know, what was going to happen to the shoreline areas um, on Roosevelt Island. But when we first started filming, um, we didn't know that that was going to be such a focus of the story. And, you know, um, I know you guys had wrapped the film up a little while ago. What's happened since then? And also for those of us that see the film, you know, um, what are ways that we can kind of continue to follow the story? Um. Yeah, we, I went back there uh, like two months ago at this point, you know, the, the park that they constructed at the end is, you know, the trees are growing. It's a nice place to walk around. Um, her sanctuary, which a whole part of the story that we didn't really go into, but there was a, there was a year there where she wasn't sure that she would get to continue, continue the sanctuary at all. And so um, luckily they did relocate the sanctuary and it's, seems to be thriving. And so um, I think uh, in terms of following what's happening there, I mean, her, uh, you can always check in on with Wildlife Freedom Foundation, which is her organization. They have a website and Instagram and you can adopt a cat from them. Um, and, you know, I think to me, what I kind of appeals about the way the film ends, it's a little bit ambiguous about we've had people who watch and are really angry at the powers that be for not involving the community with these decisions and just forging ahead with their plan. Um, and other people who 
think they did the right thing and it's a really nice park and everything's okay now. And I think sort of my own feeling about it is that uh, it is ambiguous, but I'm glad there are Rosannas in the world who are fighting for the, you know, animals and nature that can't speak. Um, and I think it's just sort of interest, food for thought to um, see that process unfold on a small scale. Yeah, most definitely. I think you capture it you quite well. I mean, the thing I always uh, love about films like this is it's the ones that, you know, after you leave the theater, you finish at home, it's like, you know, you go grab dinner together or a drink or something like that. And it kind of like, um, it creates these sense of conversations in the sense that, you know, there's these no real right answers, but there's these things that you, um, you know, appreciate. And so um, hopefully this, you know, you know, we, you know, have similar things that go on in the Bay Area that just, you know, um, you know, it just requires, you know, all of us to be kind of active involved, at least, you know, whatever decisions are made, hopefully um, we're all kind of thinking about and reflecting on it in that way. Um, in regards to your guys other, I know you guys have made some other films. What's a way to continue to kind of follow um, your guys' career or even, you know, the, uh, the film if we want to kind of spread the word about? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been working on a three film series uh, about neurodegenerative diseases. We screened um, at, at Indie Fest, the film on uh, Parkinson's disease. It's a series called Matter of Mind uh, that's available to stream. Um, I'm not very active on social media, but Daniel is more active if you want to share your your info. Um, yeah, my, my next big project is a human child, but um, I <laughs> have a website, uh, dschloss.com, and my email's on there and other stuff. So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again, Anna, and thank you again, Daniel, for being part of the festival. We really appreciate you sharing the film with us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.